Design and Simulation of MEMS-Based Capacitive Accelerometers for Crash Detection and Airbag Deployment in Automobile. Abstract This paper focuses on design and analysis of MEMS-based accelerometer to detect accidents and for the deployment of airbags. In the case of a car accident, where there are sudden and strong accelerations, it is necessary to measure as fast as possible their intensity and direction with good accuracy and precision, aiming to reduce the injury severity to passengers. With the continuous advancements in microelectromechanical systems, MEMS, fabrication technology, inertial sensors like accelerometers and gyroscopes can be designed and manufactured with smaller footprint and lower power consumption. Capacitive accelerometers are the most popular and highly researched due to several advantages like high sensitivity, low noise, low temperature sensitivity, linearity, and small footprint. When sudden displacement occurs due to impact the comb gets shock loads or forces and that movement is observed by differential capacitance concept with dielectric as air. The simulations will be carried out on COMSOL while the design will be carried out on COMSOL, the actual theoretical calculation and the simulations are compared in order to get accurate results. The capacitance output obtained is carried to the electronic control unit which sends the impulse signal to airbag system and deployment of airbags takes place. Introduction Automotive is one of the most emerging areas since ages and is constantly under developments. These developments in technology and these advancements are not without responsibilities to assure that the end user is safe and satisfied. The industry's primary concerns are improving the performance, safety, and comfort aspects which have become evident over the years with introduction of highly improved standards with every iteration. Passenger safety is a field highly researched on to ensure the survival of a passenger in a car crash. This brings us to the crash detection and airbag deployment systems in the automotive industry. Frontal airbags drastically reduce harm to driver in frontal crashes by almost 30% and fatalities of front seat passengers of age 13 and older by 32%, survey from 2015. NHTSA estimates that as of 2015, a total of 44,869 lives have been saved primarily by frontal airbags, survey 2017. At the instant of a crash, sensors start to measure severance of the impact. When the crash occurs beyond a set intensity, the sensors signal control unit to inflate the bags with gas within fractions of a second. The reference work analyzes a capacitive accelerometer capable of identifying positive and negative levels of acceleration along three perpendicular directions. However, this project is referred to a sensor capable of working with accelerations on an XY plane, on which it was built starting from a planar geometry. To understand this type of sensor the technological process with which modern semiconductor integrated circuits are manufactured is extensively used, thanks to which MEMS sensors are able to have dimensions in the order of nanometers. In case of a car accident, it is of utmost requirement that the airbag system reacts as fast as possible from the moment of the impact, in order to avoid fatal injuries. For this reason, it is necessary that the system analyses and give a response within the shortest possible time. The capacitive sensors are basically based on a moving solid body with a certain mass that will move when subjected to acceleration. The movement of the mass is the most important factor, because the small displacements of the structure leads, fingers and proof mass, to a variation of a capacity, as there are parts, called fingers that move closer or farther away depending on the direction of acceleration. These displacements are a direct effect of the acceleration on the system. When the capacity produced reaches a certain threshold value, it means that we are in a limit condition in the case under consideration, therefore, the system will react appropriately. System Details Proof Mass a proof mass or test mass is a known quantity of mass used in a measuring instrument as a reference for the measurement of an unknown quantity. A proof mass that deforms a spring in an accelerometer is sometimes called the seismic mass. This proof mass will have fingers attached to it on either side. Spring, thin beams placed in rectangular manner act as springs in the system. It facilitates movement to the proof mass, which in turn moves the fingers. 
the stiffness of these springs is the key parameter for displacement. Fingers, attached to the proof mass, these components are responsible to obtain differential capacitance. They are placed in between dielectric plates, such that a finger gap and an anti-finger gap exists between them. Connecting beams, these are used to connect the proof mass to the springs. Four connecting beams are used with two for each spring. It is based on the movement of a proof mass to which are attached mobile fingers whose movement makes a change in capacity, that is calculated between them and the fixed fingers. From the displacement it can be traced back the acceleration value and the capacitive system is used to calculate it. The instantaneous change in velocity, acceleration, on impact is converted into force on the system by Newton's laws of motion. This force is then responsible for the proof mass to move which results in the movement of the fingers. A differential capacitance is set up at the gaps between the fingers and the dielectric plates. This capacitance produces a voltage which is transferred to the electronic control unit of the vehicle and if it is within the acceptable range causes the airbag to deploy. The system can be depicted by a spring mass damper setup. A force F, generated by external acceleration acting on the mass, M, causes a displacement X. The differential equation describing the system response is given by equation. Zero is the dielectric permeability of the vacuum and is worth 8,85410-12F slash M, R is the dielectric permeability of the material that separates the armatures, in our case it is taken as 1F slash M, considering that there will be only air, A is the total overlap surface between the electrodes and D is the gap from the finger. Finger gap D1 and anti-finger gap D2 are taken in the ratio 1 colon 2 respectively. This is done in order to discriminate the displacements in X and Y axes. Thus, capacitance will be axis. When acceleration along the X axis occurs, the capacity between the mobile and fixed fingers varies, because on the right the surface will increase by a factor X, the displacement, which will be added to the overlap length L and on the other side it will decrease, by the same amount. When acceleration on the y-axis happens, the variation in capacity depends on the displacement that makes the distances D from the fingers vary. The change in capacity will depend on the displacement along the y-axis and further simplified substituting D1 equals 2AA D2. The system is initially given a fixed amount of supply voltage, and once the differential capacitance is obtained, an output voltage signal will be sent to the control unit of the vehicle. The following section of the report addresses some of the research work carried out by various researchers in the field of capacitive accelerometers and their extensive utilization for crash detection and airbag deployment. The research papers that were referred to are listed below. Jesse Kendall PEET.AL1 This paper gives an insight on the airbag deployment criteria and process. D. Estima ET.AL, 2017 2 This paper provides insight on the crash tests that can help the experts to identify the ranges of accelerations that may appear in various collision types. The correct sensors and data acquisition devices used in crash tests depend by the type of collisions. Gitabat ET.AL 2019-3 This paper provides insight on the importance of MEMS in the automotive industry along with the various applications in vehicles along with MEMS fabrication. Vijayakumar SET.AL 2011-4 This paper depicts the design and analysis of a two-axis MEMS capacitive accelerometer Divya ET.AL 2015-5 This paper provides insight on analysis of three-axis accelerometers using Cosmol. Guarafilwari ET.AL 2017-6 This paper provides insight on the importance of MEMS in the automotive industry and how they are cost-effective, compact in size and help prevent major catastrophe. Murad Ben Mesehud, 2013-7 Optimization with respect to design parameters are done and variation are studied Julio Puccini, 2028 This paper provides insight on the performance of a standard capacitor accelerometer at varying accelerations and also provides insight on the effect of variation of thickness of the capacitive accelerometer. Zachary Yamohamed 2016-9 This paper optimizes finger spacing and spring constant and simulation is carried out. Research Gap 
the literature of displacement and stress analysis with respect to two-axis MEMS capacitor accelerometer is scarce and doesn't involve alterations to the accelerometer to improve efficiency. The objective of our project is to design a two-axis MEMS accelerometer and analyze the displacement and stress along the X and Y axis. Certain alterations with respect to the design of the accelerometer are done to study the difference in performance. Design Design of Standard Capacitance Accelerometer The preliminary design was carried out on solid edge. The design parameters of the standard capacitive accelerometer is taken from one of the research papers that were referred to. The fixed fingers and the proof mass along with fingers and springs were separately designed. The standard design has a total of 12 fingers on the proof mass. The thickness of both the proof mass and the fixed fingers are considered to be 40 mm. 5.2.1 Standard Capacitive Accelerometer Design of Capacitance Accelerometer with Reduced Thickness of 20 mm The thickness of both the proof mass and the fixed fingers are reduced by 20 mm with respect to the standard design. There is no variation in any other parameters other than the thickness. The total number of fingers present in this model is 12. The proof mass and the fixed fingers are separately designed and assembled. 5.3.1 Capacitive Accelerometer of Thickness 20 mm Design of Capacitance Accelerometer with Increased Thickness of 80 mm The thickness of both the proof mass and the fixed fingers are increased by 40 mm with respect to the standard design. There is no variation in any other parameters other than the thickness. The total number of fingers present in this model is 12 The proof mass and the fixed fingers are separately designed and assembled. 5.4.1 Capacitive accelerometer of thickness 80 mm. Design of capacitance accelerometer with increased thickness of 160 mm. The thickness of both the proof mass and the fixed fingers are increased by 120 mm with respect to the standard design. There is no variation in any other parameters other than the thickness. The total number of fingers present in this model is 12. The proof mass and the fixed fingers are separately designed and assembled. 5.5.1 Capacitive Accelerometer of Thickness 160 mm Design of Capacitance Accelerometer with Additional Fingers with Same C-S The fixed fingers and the proof mass along with fingers and springs were separately designed. The standard design has a total of 16 fingers on the proof mass. The thickness of both the proof mass and the fixed fingers are considered to be 40 mm. The proof mass and the fixed fingers are separately designed and assembled. 5.6.1 Capacitive Accelerometer with Additional Fingers 5.6.2 Gap Between Fingers Chapter 6 Analysis Standard Model the model is scaled as per 1 nm equals 1 mm in the simulation process. The stress analysis is done on the software called ANSI. First the assembly created on solid edge is converted to a .ix file which makes it compatible with ANSI. The assembly is then transferred to ANSI via the design modeler. After importing the assembly the in the design modeler, a face split is performed to separate the proof mass from the fingers and the connecting rods. The material is selected to be silicon anisotropic for the analysis. The design is then meshed with a size of 50 mm. The acceleration is set to the proof mass for 10g in the x-axis, and a displacement of 0 mm is set in the x-axis. The fixed fingers are considered as fixed constraints. The larger springs are also constrained as the analysis is strictly performed for the x-axis. The total deformation analysis is performed and results are obtained for 10G, 30G, 50G, 70G and 100G respectively. Similarly the same procedure is followed for analysis of stress in the y-axis. Instead of constraining the larger springs, the smaller springs are constrained. The acceleration is considered to be 10G and the displacement is considered to be 0 mm in z-axis. The total deformation is analyzed for 10G, 30G, 50G, 70G and 100G respectively. Generally has a dimension of 40 mm thickness. 
the analysis conducted indicates that with increase in the thickness of the capacitive accelerometer, the displacement decreases which in turn increases the capacitance induced. With increase in capacitance induced the response time of the airbag control module is reduced, thus increasing the efficiency of accelerometer by increasing the thickness of the capacitive accelerometer also increases the stress induced in the accelerometer. So, we have to compromise with the efficiency of the accelerometer due to the stress produced. The basic standard of capacitive accelerometer available in market. Future work. The entire work was carried out based on the fingers placed in the lateral position only, along x-axis, even for the y-axis simulations. Thus, one of the major improvements to the model can be the introduction of sensing fingers on the y-axis that is along the longitudinal direction as well. This will Stress analysis Stress analysis was carried out to analyze critical points of failure under the action of loads. Thus, what can be inferred from this is that, for application of load in x direction, the maximum stress is concentrated at the point where the fingers are attached to the proof mass. For the y-axis analysis, the stress was observed to be concentrated at the point where the lateral connecting beams are attached to the proof mass. Further enhance the system efficiency particularly for longitudinal analysis. The work carried out can further be improved and a more idealistic and justified results can be obtained taking into consideration the COMSOL software approach. The model can be taken its true scale and boundary conditions will remain the same as in case of the work carried out above. Two primary modules are taken into consideration. One is the solid mechanics module that deals with the static structural analysis of displacement and stress of the body. The next is the electrostatics module which deals with determination of differential capacitance at the terminals. Required. A reference voltage of 1V is applied to the fixed terminals and the proof mass will be at ground charge condition. This is analyzed under electric potential probe analysis to determine output voltage and Maxwell differential capacitances can be obtained in tabulated format. In order to analyze the capacitance produced by the capacitive accelerometer an electrostatic study was conducted in COMSOL. The fixed fingers are given an terminal voltage value of 1V. The proof mass along with the movable fingers are grounded. A body load is defined with respect to volume on the proof mass. The fixed constraints are applied on the fixed fingers. A global probe is created to determine the Maxwell capacitance. Thus, through this approach, both static structural and electrostatics can give conclusive evidence on the efficiency of the system, through both static analysis and electrical approach. Dynamic Analysis Another approach to obtain precise outputs is the dynamic analysis of TE system in time-dependent form. Due to lack of system requirements and license of software being limited to use, this approach was not possible to be done. However, in future prospects, this will definitely enhance the results and give justified outputs for effective efficiency comparison between the models. However, a transient structural, time variant, approach was carried out in subsets for a time interval of 1 starting from 0.2 seconds in steps of 0.1 slash 0.15 seconds up to 16 subsets. It was observed that the deformation is more or less the same as in case of static structural, but a very small decrease in deformation was seen halfway through the time interval and the certain small variations of increase decrease took place, after which, the value increases and maximum value is obtained. Acceleration, displacement, and fixed constraints would remain the same as in static structural analysis.